Hello everybody and welcome to my video that's going to show us about the science behind leavening agents. So if you remember from class, leavening agents are the things that make our products rise. Okay, and we've been talking about different kinds of breads. We've been talking about quick breads and yeast breads. And so leavening agents are the things that are going to help them rise, right? We put a bread, um, banana bread, for example, in the oven and we expect it to come out with a little bit more than what we put in. And the thing that does that is these ingredients here. And we have three of those, like we've talked about. We have baking soda, which is one that normally comes in a box like this. We have baking powder, which comes more in like a can. Okay, this is double acting baking powder, which we will talk about later. And this baking powder is really just a combination of baking soda and a light powdered acid. Okay, so that's all that baking um, powder is. And then we have yeast, and this is a package of three. Um, and so in each package, there are two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. And the yeast is just little dry pellets. We've talked about how yeast is a living thing, but right now it's just a sleep. We'll come back to that as we start to look at the rest of our experiment. Um, some other things that we're gonna be using today, we have some vinegar that we will be using. There's also some sugar in a couple of our yeast containers, as well as some water, okay? Now, what we are going to be doing today is taking a look at how these leavening agents work, okay? And so I have these three water bottles on this side are going to be our yeast bread. So this has yeast in it. And these three water bottles are our quick breads. And so that there's a combination of baking soda and baking powder on this side of my table. So when we're looking at these two things, okay, um, you'll notice that I have balloons on each of these water bottles. We are going to be using these balloons as a way to see how these leavening agents compare to each other and how the things that we're adding to them affect the way that they're being used, okay? So when we're doing this, is instead of using a, a helium tank or our mouths to blow up balloons, we're going to be using the power of these leavening agents. Because when we're putting something in the oven and we're asking for it to rise, really the leavening agents are just adding that air into whatever it is that we are baking. Okay. And so these um, balloons are going to kind of be like our bread products that we're going to try and make rise. All right. So as we are getting started here, we are going, I'm going to explain what's in each of these different things. So for all of the water bottles, the um, leavening agent being used is currently inside the balloon. So you'll notice that I have balloons attached to the tops of all of these water bottles, but I have them dangling off the side. And that's because they are filled with baking soda, baking powder, or yeast, and then they're attached so that I can just lift them up and release them. But for now, none of the leavening agent is being mixed with the things that are inside the water bottle. Okay, so let's talk about what's in each of these. Up here on my quick bread side with the orange, um, with the orange balloon, inside the orange balloon is some baking soda, and inside the water bottle is a little bit of vinegar. In this blue balloon right here, we have, again, baking soda, but instead in our water bottle, we have water at the bottom. In this red balloon, we have baking soda this time with some water. Up on my yeast side in the front, the pink balloon is yeast with a little bit of sugar as well as water that was heated to exactly 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I used my thermometer, so it's exactly 110 degrees Fahrenheit. This one in the middle, it is yeast in this green balloon plus a little bit of sugar and just cold water from the tap. And then in this one, there is yeast in the yellow balloon, and then we have 110 degree water in the water bottle. So at this point, I'd like to pause, and we need to make some hypotheses about what balloon is going to inflate the most. Which of these combinations of ingredients is going to create the best scenario to make this product, in this case, our balloons, rise? So we're gonna make one separate observation for our yeast spreads, and we're going to make another separate observation for our quick breads. Okay. Now that we've made some hypotheses about what we think is going to happen, now we want to start actually doing the experiment and seeing how this is going to work. I'm going to start with the yeast bread side because the yeast breads, um, they take a little bit longer for their process to work. Okay. So as I'm getting up here to come do this, I am going to lift this pink balloon and it is going to drop the yeast down into my water bottle. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a stir so those things can start to mix together. 
As you can see, my balloon has already started to fill a little bit with air, but we're gonna let that sit because I bet it'll fill a little bit more. Uh, so remember that this pink balloon, this is the one that has yeast, as well as 110 degree water and sugar. In my second one, I have sugar and water, and then I will drop this balloon in here and add my yeast. And give it a little bit of a stir. Okay, so again, I've got cold water, sugar, and yeast in this one. It looks still pretty deflated, but we'll leave that there to see if anything better happens. This last one is just 110 degree water with my yeast, no sugar in this last one. So I'll dump my yeast in there and give this a little bit of a stir. And we'll let those set, okay? So these yeast ones, they take a little bit longer. Remember we talked a little bit about that proofing time. It's gonna take a minute for the yeast to start to go through those motions, okay? While we're waiting for the yeast to start going through those motions, let's talk about our quick breads over here, okay? So our first one is our baking soda, okay? It's baking soda and vinegar. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my baking soda in there. Okay, and you'll notice that right away that baking soda and that vinegar is already starting to mix and I got a nice big balloon here. Okay, so that was our first one with a really immediate response. Okay, so we can talk about how baking soda, when we mix baking soda with an acid, that is what activates our baking soda. So when we're talking about um, using baking soda in, an ingredient, in a recipe, we need to make sure that there is some kind of ingredient that's an acid. Okay, and I have in parentheses down here that vinegar is one of our acids. And so because I'm mixing this with vinegar, that baking soda is able to do its job and make this balloon blow up, okay? This next one is mixing water with baking soda, okay? And so water is neutral on our pH scale. It's not an acid or a base. And so even if I stir this out, my balloon isn't doing anything, right? That at, there's no acid in here to give my baking soda anything to work with. On the flip side, let's see what happens when we mix baking powder with water. Okay. So remember, this is just baking powder and a little bit of water. Okay, as you can see, the balloon isn't blown up like this one but it is blown up, right? It's not deflated like our blue one is. So baking powder, remember, is different than baking soda, okay? So when we think about baking powder and baking soda, our baking soda needs an acid like that um, vinegar to make it do its job, to make it make our product rise like that orange blue who blew up. Our baking uh, powder, okay? Our baking powder is a combination of baking soda and an acid already, which means that in my baking powder, I have both of the things that I need in order for this to react, okay? And so the first time, remember that I said that baking powder is double acting. And what that means is that the first time that it works, the first time that baking soda starts to do its job is when it's mixed with a liquid. So you'll see that it's partially blown up this red balloon, but this isn't all that it would do, okay? So what I would need to do to make this product finish rising is to add heat. So baking powder is double acting, which means that when you mix it with a liquid, that's when it first starts to do its job and starts to rise. But as soon as you put it in the oven, that's that second round where it's going to now start to rise even more, okay? So if we added heat to this mixture, we would probably end up with a balloon as big as the orange one. But for now, we still can tell that we don't need to add vinegar to our baking powder in order to make it work like we needed to use to our baking soda, okay? If we come back to our yeast now, I'm gonna shake this up again. Okay, our pink balloon is spilling. Our green balloon looks like it's filled, but it's really not. It's just standing up straight, okay? It's really flopped over. It doesn't have anything in it. And our yellow balloon, is kind of blown up, but not really, okay? So as you can tell in these two water bottles also, okay, it's kind of murky, and you may not be able to tell super well on the camera, but this one is kind of frothy, and this is our one that has our, um, our sugar in it, okay? Remember when we were talking about yeast, that the yeast needs to be woken up. Right now, our yeast is these little dry pellets. 
but I said that it's a living organism. If I opened up one of these packages of yeast and laid them out on the table, my yeast isn't gonna start moving around on me. It's dry, it's dormant, it's asleep, almost like a zombie. And what we need to do is we need to wake it up from its slumber. And the way that we do that is by adding warm water at a very specific temperature. In this case, we were talking about 110 degrees, which is why my water bottle with the cold water did not wake up my yeast and didn't inflate my balloon at all. Okay. But we also know that once our yeast wakes up, it is starving and we need to make sure we give it food so that it can do its job, right? We talked about how the yeast, once it's woken up, we need to feed it sugar. And once we feed it that sugar, then that's when it is spitting out that carbon dioxide. It's producing that carbon dioxide. We talked about it burping, right? It's eating up all of the sugar and then it's burping out that carbon dioxide. In this balloon, you'll notice it's now kind of deflated, okay? whereas my pink balloon is still standing straight up. The yeast doesn't have anything to eat. This was just warm water and yeast. Okay? Without the food source, without having any sugar to eat, the yeast can't finish doing its job. So you remember right at the beginning, and it still is kind of inflated. There's still some air inside this balloon, so it's able to do its job a little bit. But we can't expect our yeast to fully do its job without giving it something to eat. Okay? And so that's why this one is doing the best job so far, out of our yeast spreads at least, where we need to make sure that we have given that, that yeast the correct temperature water to make sure it wakes up, but then we also want to make sure that we're giving it the sugar so that it can have something to eat to be able to produce the carbon dioxide to fill our balloon or in a case of baking to make our bread rise. Okay. When we're talking about these two things, if we even just look at our two front balloons, our pink balloon, which is our front runner for yeast, and our orange balloon, which is blown up bigger than our red balloon on our quick bread side, but our orange balloon from that baking, uh, baking soda and vinegar. Our orange balloon is blown up really nice and big, but our pink balloon for yeast is not so much. That's because yeast is something that takes a very long process, okay? So yeast takes a while to proof. So it takes a while to wake up and start doing its thing. Then once it's started to wake up, which is where we're at right now, it still takes a little bit of time before your product, whatever it is that you're making with yeast in it, is going to start to rise. So a lot of times we need to put things in the oven or in the fridge overnight, put our dough in the fridge overnight so that I can finish rising. So then in the morning when it's time to bake the bread or whatever it is again, your bread has doubled in size because that yeast has been rapidly going all overnight, okay? The yeast can't eat up all that sugar really fast. Like all of this baking soda immediately mixed with all of the vinegar. The yeast can't do that. They have to go at a certain rate. There's, they can't go much faster. They can only go as fast as they can. So our yeast is a little bit of a slower process, okay? So our yeast tends to take a little bit longer to make sure that our products rise. So it may need keeping it overnight, and then baking it the next day. Whereas our quick breads, we can put them straight in the oven and immediately get a reaction like that orange balloon, where we're having our cake or our cupcakes or pancakes or whatever it is, put them on and they're immediately fluffed up to where we expect them to be, okay? So the important thing to remember with this is that there is a specific set of ingredients that needs to go with each different kind of leavening agents, right? We talked about yeast a lot, but we also have talked about how baking, um, baking soda needs to be mixed with some kind of acid. And it doesn't necessarily need to be vinegar in, an, in a recipe. There are all sorts of other acids that baking soda can interact with in order to get the correct amount of rise that we need. But we also talked about how baking powder does not need an acid because there's an acid already built in here. This baking powder is really just a combination of baking soda and an acid. And we can use both of these in different quick bread ingredients, and you may use either of them for different kinds of things. Some recipes, you may have both of them in the same one recipe. But in all of these cases, we can see that there is specific sets of things that need to happen in order to make sure they rise. And if we don't do that, if we use the incorrect temperature water, we don't give it sugar, or we don't mix baking soda with an acid, we aren't going to get the rise that we need. So we need to help our leavening agents out to make sure that we end up with the product that we need, okay? So I wonder if your hypotheses came true, if you guessed right. If you didn't, I hope you were able to learn something today from our science experiment.